I'm Reverend Ian Girling. I'm Vocations Advisor for Canadian and also Vicar in Holy Trinity Church, Aberystwyth. So we'll start a little bit about your history and your background. You started as a reader in England. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, I was um, attending an Anglican church in Salisbury Diocese. And uh, one particular day, I, I was an organist in the village churches. And on that particular day, I was in the congregation. And the minister was talking to us. There was about 100 people in church. And the whole idea was that we were to use the gifts that we'd been given. And I thought at that time, nothing more than my ordinary work. And also, just to leave it really with family. But... I felt God call that day to say that I ought to be doing something more. And it was seemingly that the other people in the congregation just weren't there. And when it came to communion, I was to kneel in front uh, to receive communion. And the place I didn't want to kneel was in front of the uh, man who just preached. Uh, but inevitably, that was where I knelt. And I felt what he was going to do was get up out of his seat and put his hand on my shoulder and say, come on Ian, we've got to talk some more about this, about using the gift that you've been given. I went to see him during the week, and our, as our uh, rector was on sabbatical at the time, I talked to him and we agreed the course of action, and I became a reader in Salisbury Diocese at that point, and thought nothing more about it, uh, just that that was it, I was preaching, I was teaching, I felt God was calling me to that. Um, some years later, that changed a little bit, in that other people around me were thinking, Ian, you ought to be ordained, and I was thinking, no, not really, I'm quite happy, thank you very much with what I'm doing, and that seemed to be strong in, in the calling in that way about using the gifts we've been given again for God. and. Uh, in the end, I, I was offered to run a um, yacht brokerage in Falmouth. I had an interview with the Royal National Mission to Deep Sea Fishermen in Scotland. And I was invited to, do, to be a manager of a hotel on Jersey, all at the same time. And I just felt that none of them were right. There was something stirring within me which said, go and talk to the rector about ordination. I went to see him uh, following that. And uh, his first comment to me was, I've been waiting for you to come for months. And I'm thinking, I didn't really want to hear that. But there was a sense of peace in my heart that I'd asked the question. From there, I went to see a vocations advisor in uh, the nearby town. And we had some months together. And then eventually on to the, uh, what was called then the director of diocesan director of ordinance. You came to Aberystwyth? Yes. And you're now vicar at... Holy Trinity Church. Holy Trinity Church. And uh, from there, you've now become the vocations advisor. Yes, yes. So that's been a journey. That's been a journey in itself, because one, one part of me wanted to be able to give back something that other people had given to me. Um, also, in a past life, I've been... A careers consultant so that the whole thing seemed to be quite a good circle to fill and what I've found having done the job for three four years now is is the enormity of what the people come with they come all the stories are different everything that they bring is different but what we're looking for is God's will for them as far as ordination or lay ministry is concerned um, and so the, what I often get, the very first meeting is, I don't know quite why I've come, but I've come because I think God is calling me to something. And then we spend months very often just exploring that calling, going through that, leading up to the point where we can then talk to uh, the warden of ordinance for the diocese and for that person then to give application forms and lead them on to diocesan selection boards and provincial selection boards from there uh, and it's been an absolute privilege actually to be able to help people through their journey through what they're looking at 
Um, we, we do that, we have um, books that they can read. I also like to do morning prayers, evening prayers, and then have Bible readings and prayers within that that focus their mind more on their individual calling. So I imagine as many different people as there are, there are as many different Absolutely. responses to a calling. Yes, yes. They're... Mistakenly, I thought there was only one way for this, but there isn't. With every person's story, they are individually different. And, and so you, you just sort of go with, with that and see where their story takes you. And, and very often you'll find something in there that you can then hitch other things on to so that you then take them down the road to look at ordination and seeing where they might go with God. I will admit that not everybody I see gets ordained. There are times that people come because they think that's the thing to do, or maybe their vicar has pressurised them sometimes, or maybe they've just got something in the back of their mind but they're not quite sure. Occasionally we have to say, no, I don't think this is God's will for you. But more often than not, it is an affirming thing. But the other is equally as important because it may not be ordination, but it could be lay readership or worship leading or something else in the church, which is for them. Um, and I think it's important that we have the discussions lead on to something like that. Yes, because there are many types of ministry. Oh, indeed there are. There's, a, there's a huge variety of ministry. Yes, so. yes, it, indeed. I think in Wales, what we've come up with, uh, in, certainly in our diocese, we were very heavily dependent upon stipendiary ministry. We've broadened that out to include non-stipendiary ministry as well, and we've now broadened it out to have non-stipendiary ministry in a local context. And I think that is huge in that way. So we have people that are all going to be ordained who then serve in a local place. They've set down roots in that place. And um, they and we and others feel that God is calling them to minister to those people in that place. Uh, with stipendiary ministry and non-stipendiary ministry, the, the license is basically worldwide, I guess. But for those people who are ordained locally, it is just for the people in that area. And I think that actually makes that really special. On top of that, of course, there's reader ministry, lay ministry in that way. They're not ordained, but can preach, can teach, and very often can take funerals and also can bring communion by extension uh, to churches and uh, congregations that wouldn't necessarily have a vicar on a regular basis. We can then work also with people who are worship leading and encourage them to stand up front and lead the church in worship. And for some too, I think there's also ministry in reading the Bible out loud and intercessing, being up front and being able to re read well so that people can understand the Word of God and also to lead people in intercessions, to lead people in prayers. I think there's a huge ministry in both of those which is something which we can develop as a diocese more. So what advice would you give to somebody who feels God might be calling them? What, 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 where, what should they do? The first I think is to talk to the vicar um, and having talked to the vicar to, to pass to one of the, the vocations advisors uh, in there's, there's one for Ceredigion, one for uh, Pembrokeshire, one for Carmarthenshire and to talk to them and then explore this whole idea following that. Uh, we would keep the vicar involved and informed as to what's going on and we go along the journey together. Uh, and having then spent some time together, we then pass them on to sit on a diocesan selection board if that was for ordained ministry or indeed something similar for readership in, in the diocese.